actually is a really nice looking truck. I love the design of it. Anyway, let's get to this recall. So the recall is the automatic braking system by software. What's happening is the camera is detecting or inaccurately detecting things and braking when it shouldn't be and then causing accidents. So they're doing a recall on the Colorado, try to update the software and probably make it a little less sensitive. But that brings me to the whole purpose of this video. This is not the first truck or the first manufacturer that we've seen with software problems in their cars, software and tech. We just saw multiple problems this year. We saw problems with Ford and their taillights, taillights getting moisture in them. Corrosion gets on the proximity sensors, gets on the cameras. And then what happens? It shorts out the entire system up the CAN bus all the way to the truck and the truck won't start. All because we're trying to stack too much software, too many too many gizmos and gadgets in your truck to save you from what? We've driven cars for years without cameras and backup proximity sensors and all these things. Why do we need all of this assisted software and assisted electronics, which eventually breaks down whether it's with reliability in the long term or the short term, in this case, it's a safety issue. And you don't want someone rear ending your ass because your truck decided to stop for you when it shouldn't have, right? And this is just another example of why software is eating the car. I wanted to share this article with you guys. This is exactly how I feel about the auto industry and the trend towards self-driving cars and electric vehicles will add hundreds of millions of lines of code to our cars. That's starting to happen. That front camera in the Colorado, I guarantee you it has some sort of AI object detection. I mean, that's the same AI object detection we use for everything else, right? It's detecting objects and trying to determine if it should stop or not based on the size of the object and the proximity to the car. It all sounds good in theory, but what we have is a bunch of educated people designing these cars and these systems, and they're not thinking through all of the scenarios. They're not imagining all the bad things that could happen on the road. Imagine I grew up in a rural area. We had elk, deer, all sorts of things on the road. And it's not always advisable to slam on the brakes when there's a deer in front of you because you might have a semi or a bus behind you when you're driving. So you don't want to always hit your brakes and you shouldn't have to turn it off. You should, it should be an opt in sort of like our privacy online, but it's not. Not only are the sensors bad for reliability and, and cause all these problems like this recall, they're also causing supply chain issues like we had over the past couple of years because you need all these chips and AI and all these connections, CAN bus systems to connect to each other just to run our modern vehicles. And another thing, that's why our vehicles cost so much because they're putting all this junk tech in there that they don't bother to make sure that it's insulated properly either. And the worst part about this is Software is incredibly complex. When you write software, even just static software, it's actually, fa it's fairly easy to write, but it's actually difficult to test and think through all of the scenarios, just the scenarios of someone with a mobile phone, an iPad, and a computer that use the website. Now imagine a vehicle that's moving down the road that's in different environments, different climates, different temperatures, different languages. There's so much complexity in a car in testing that it would be almost impossible to release cars with absolutely bug-free software. It's insane. It's actually quite astounding that we don't have more problems than we have today. And going back to the cost, look at this graph. It shows the projected forecast for 2030 on how much of the electronics system will be, you know, like the percent total cost of the car. So by 2030, they anticipate that 50% of the car cost will be in electronics. We are already at a point where cars cost too much and people can't afford them. They literally can't afford them. There's lots filling up with cars right now because they are too expensive and interest rates are too high. And look at this, the article goes on to say, some car makers have hundreds of thousands of potential build combinations of an individual vehicle model, if not more. To live test every combination of electronics possible in some car models would require billions of test setups. What they mean is, it, it's almost impossible to test every single combination of all the different chips because you know you might have a limited or a platinum version of a car and those have different chips different style chips different sensors proximity sensors some don't have them so there's all these different combinations ecu combinations different software for different vehicles some are detuned some are tuned a little higher than others the amount of craziness this causes it, it, it we're seeing it play out right in all of these recalls and the feeling that all of these new cars are not as reliable this is part of the problem and they go on to say that they can test their ECU combinations and use these breadboards uh, in labs. But as we all know, lab testing obviously doesn't work, right? 
that's why we have recalls. That's why we have problems on the road because lab, te lab testing only gets you so far. It's like theoretical testing. And the problem with lab testing is it's only what you can dream up as an engineer. You dream something up and you're trying to dream up every scenario. If you don't dream up all of the scenarios, you're going to have bugs. Now, keep in mind, this article was from 2021. We're not, I mean, we're, we're way past the tech that was in 2021, right? It, it's even more advanced now. This, this part of the article is absolutely crazy by the Volkswagen CEO. He admitted that hardly a line of software code comes from us, VW. He estimates only 10% of the software in its vehicles is developed in-house by Volkswagen. The other 90%, the other 90% is contributed by tens of suppliers at some of its OEMs. This is crazy. They're, you're having to piece together 50 different OEMs, all of their ideas about software, all of their testing methodologies, and integrate them in one vehicle and hope everything plays nice and hope everything's configured properly. Yeah, that'll that'll turn out okay. And it go, it just gets worse. So many software suppliers with their own development approach using their own operating systems and languages obviously adds another layer of complication, especially in performing verif verification and validation. Of course, obviously, right? Like it's so obvious to, to anyone with any common sense. And think about it, it goes beyond just like safety in the vehicle and the testing and how reliable is the vehicle going to be? Will it have corrosion prevention? And then you go on to think about other things like security. You've heard of all these remote takeovers like on this 2014 Jeep Cherokee. You've seen it in some of these newer Dodge uh, Ram vehicles. You've seen the uh, Hyundai and Kia vehicles. You're able to take over the vehicles by amplifying the remote that's hanging on someone's front door and amplify that signal, open the car door, start the car, Thieves are not stupid. They're going to come up with these ways to, to steal these cars and do remote takeovers and then plug things into the ODB2 port and steal your car. So, I mean, just the software just enables them to do this in an easier way if it's not secure. So that's a whole nother layer on top of all the other things we have to worry about is the security of all of these software systems and how they play together. The car is becoming this IoT device that's connected in your garage, connected by GPS and all these other ways. It's insanity. And this is just another illustration from 2021. Volvo says that more than 7,000 external signals connect 120 20 ECUs in Volvo vehicles. So back in 2008, they were saying that a luxury car only had, you know, 2,500 data signals. Now we're up to 7,000 external signals in, in 2021, and you know it's more today. And here we go. Look at this beautiful graph. The percentage of vehicles recalled due to electronic component defects. In 2019, we're up to 50%. 2015, that number was only 15%. That's a massive difference. And we're just going to see that increase. This is why when we say new vehicles suck, everybody on the internet screaming, hey, we don't want this. We don't like our new vehicles breaking down. We want to buy something that costs $50,000 and actually have it work more than a couple of years without problems. This proves it. This proves that it's not happening. And downstream, what does that cause for us? Of course, climbing costs of repairs. Many car owners are becoming aware of increasing complexity in their vehicles when they have to pay for repairs. Nearly 60% of the labor costs to repair collision involving a vehicle with advanced safety features results from the vehicle's, vehicle's electronics. Even minor damage to cracked windshield could, that used to cost $210 to $220 has climbed to as much as $1,650 for a cracked windshield. That's ridiculous. It's unacceptable in my opinion, and you shouldn't, I mean, we crack windshields in Colorado all the time, just driving down the road because they put rocks on the road. There's rocks from trucks. I mean, it, it's just, that's life. You crack a windshield, you spend two or 300 bucks and get a new one. You shouldn't have to spend $1,650 or better yet, pay your insurance company to get glass coverage so that everybody's insurance can go up every year. Yay. Boy, this is just total doom and gloom. Sorry. It goes on to say, Software using today's architectures is becoming unmanageable. According to a consulting firm, McKinsey & Company, software complexity in vehicles is rapidly outpacing the ability to both develop and maintain it. That's, that's not a good sign. If the software companies themselves and these consulting companies are saying, hey, this is, this is too much. The, it's too complex. It's outpacing our productivity. That's a big problem. They said it, the complexity of the software grew by a factor of four over the past decade, but supplier and OEM software productivity has barely risen in the same time. Furthermore, software complexity is likely to rise another factor of three over the next decade, it says. I love this statement. Once software was part of the car, now software determines the value of a car. What? It gets better with one company leader telling McKinsey that the, at the current pace, software maintenance 
of the existing code base will consume all of its software R&D resources if the gap does not close. Terrible. Oh, thank God for AI, right? We're just, we'll just have AI or generative AI write software for our cars. What could go wrong? And you know what the weird thing is? Everybody used to hate BMW and like make fun of luxury companies like BMW, maybe remember five or 10 years ago, I remember working on BMWs. They have those little fiber optic cable connections and CAN bus connections that go from front to back. You can tell which lights are out, all this compl complicated software and electronics. And now all the American and Japanese manufacturers are doing the exact same thing that the Germans did that didn't work out. We had very unreliable German cars for a long time. And then everybody just copied what they did. They copied all these aluminum engine blocks, the direct injection, all the electronics and all the German cars. Everything's just being copied. All the stuff that, I don't know, it, it didn't always work that well, right? It wasn't the most reliable way to build a car. We're going in the opposite direction I think we should go. Anyway, all that being said, if you've got a new car, I wish you luck. I feel bad for you in a way. I'm going to have to join you at some point, and I hate that idea. But at some point, I guess I'll have to just thread the needle and find some car that maybe some manufacturer figured out how to work out all these software things and make them work together. Boy, it's going to be a, a tough, a tough find. If you've got an older car, stick to it. Keep fixing it. Just hold on to it. Give it an old name like old Bessie or something, you know, some cool name. And then just, just hold on to it till the wheels fall off. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. I, I know this was a bit of a rant. I'm, I'm just annoyed. I can't believe how much is being included in these cars and it's just, it needs to be simplified. They can, they can add software to augment the vehicle. They don't need to make software the entire vehicle or half the vehicle. Uh, it's, it's biting us in the ass and this is another example of why. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it and we'll uh, see you in the next one.